Let's find out if they listen or not. This is the book of Daniel chapter 9 and verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Neither did the children of Israel obey the voice of the Lord their God. To walk in his laws. To walk in his what? To walk in his laws. Go ahead. Which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Uh-huh. Yeah. All Israel have transgressed thy law. All twelve tribes have broken God's laws. Even by departing. Uh-huh. That they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. The what? The curse is poured upon, upon us. us. Now we're going to go and get some curses and see what nations do the, these curses fit. Because these curses is only on the children of Israel. You understand that? These curses are only on the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. Verse 32. No, I need 45. 45. 28, 45. Deuteronomy 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee till thou be destroyed. So these curses are going to overtake the children of Israel until they be destroyed. Go ahead. What are we trying to do? We're we proving who are the Israelites. Okay. We're getting there. That's what we're getting to. Go ahead. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now all these curses are going to come over the children of Israel because they hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right. Go ahead. To keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a Esrachia, and for a wonder. Now these curses is going to be on the children of Israel for a sign and for a wonder. A sign to let you know who they are because that's Subway. We know that that's Subway because there's a sign on it. Right. It's right. a jewelry store. We know this is a jewelry store because there's a sign on it. Right. Now he's saying you're going to know who the children of Israel are because these curses is going to be a sign that's only on them and no other race. Right. Go ahead and read. And upon thy seed forever. For how long? Forever. Until Christ come back. So these curses are going to be on the children of Israel until Christ come back. You understand that? I don't agree with that. Okay, but well, go ahead and read. All right, this is the book of De Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy hold son. On, hold on. Why don't you agree with that? So those curses, it, you go later on into the Old Testament, like Hosea and talks about you know if my children if my children will uh, hear my voice it's the same it's the same argument as in De Deuteronomy but it continues all through the minor prophets okay uh, the curse was was the exile the Babylonian exile um, and then so the, the curse stopped well I'm not sure that the I'm not sure that we're thinking of it in the same way so the that's frankincense and mirth frankincense and mirth Christ favor smell it's, okay I'm with you. go ahead <laughs> Right, so um, so the curse. I don't. God doesn't have a nose. Um, so the curse was uh, was alleviated when I mean when God came into the world, right? So when Christ was incarnate, right? So when Christ came when, into the when world, when Christ was incarnate, right? he lived a life, he died the death, he rose from the dead, and all of that. Um, has put death to death. To death, there, so, there is no more. So, children Israel no more under curses. It, I, I don't think huh? that the children of Israel is the same thing in the new covenant. Oh no, no, that's a whole other topic. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter thirty-one, verse thirty-one. Oh boy. <laughs> matter of fact, let's go to the New Testament. I can't new, actually continue because I have to. Uh, Hold on, don't go. Please don't go. Five more minutes. Play? Okay, five, five more minutes. minutes. Okay. All right, the eyes will run, but five more minutes. Hebrews, we're going to go to the one in the, in the New Testament or the Old Testament? That doesn't the, the, matter. The New Covenant. Okay, yeah. we're going to go to the New Testament. Yeah, then. Hebrews Let's is go to great. Hebrews yeah. Eight eight. Yeah. Let's see who the covenant is Christ for. is the better. Okay, because you, the... your, your, um, your argument is that when Christ died, that covenant, that old covenant was gone, right? Uh, aspects of it. He fulfilled. It's not that it was gone. It's that he fulfilled. Now, all nations is included. That's how Israelites become all nations? There, we are all, well... We are anybody who believes, and so Israel was his was the way that God was working out His plan to bring His redeemer. Uh -huh. Okay, and then when His redeemer came, then that opened up through you know through the work of Paul and and others um, that opened up the gospel to the Gentiles. Okay, and so then whoever. It, uh, Yes, I would agree that, so whoever, that whoever the is believing the Lord, in the in the shall, be, of, saved. shall be saved, right, so that's and, that's, and that's Israel. Okay, so we're gonna go to the New Testament. Let's see what the covenant is for. It's so like the New Jerusalem. This is okay, the, yeah. this okay. is the book of Hebrews, chapter eight and verse eight. 
for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. A what? A, a new, new covenant, covenant. With who? With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The Judah is the Benjamin, that's the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Mm -hmm. And is in the northern kingdom is Israel on all, down. All the, uh, okay, so he said he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Judah and Israel. That's the Israelites. Where are the other nations in there? But how about we see read it? Read again from the top. It may, it, may, it may include other nations. But let's find out. Go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with your fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the hand of Egypt. That's the covenant that you were talking about. Go ahead. Because they continue not in my covenant. And, re and regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write oh. them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Now, this is when Christ come back. This is the future one. This is the prophecy. So, if the future prophecy, I'm sorry, if the future prophecy is that the children of Israel, or he opened up the um, covenant for all nations that call on him to come in now, why is he only simmering it down to Judah and Israel? Uh -huh. So I believe that, I mean, I believe that, I believe that there is going to be some way that God uh, moves in the nation, in the nation of Israel, or in the people of Israel, or in that, but but I do not believe that it is only uh, only them, and I don't know when it's going to come. I mean, that's okay. Revelation, right? Okay. Where they're talking about that the, 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 he will bring in uh, the, you know you people that, you, from the Jews, right, and stuff like that. I know right? what you're talking about. I know. You right, but then we're going to show you who the Gentiles is that's coming back to the fold. Who you got? Obadiah to the one in verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. Esau is the Caucasian. The Esau, the house of Esau is going to be stubble in that day. Go ahead. And they oh, by the way, this is a future prophecy again. Go ahead. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. They shall devour them. And there shall be no shalaka. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken it. So this is a future prophecy a future judgment there should be and no more caucasians for the lord has spoken it read it again from the top straight through with no Obadiah, to the one in verse 18 bring it out and the house of jacob shall be in fire and the house of joseph a flame and the house of esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and there shall not be any remaining of the house of esau for the lord has spoken it so the Lord is saying he's going to wipe out a whole nation of people. There will be no more at all for the Lord has spoken it. So if that was the case that the Caucasians or Edom, which is Caucasians and Edomites, right. that means how can the Edomites get the kingdom of heaven if we think that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved? How is they included when they're going to be destroyed and nobody will never see them on the earth again? Right. The people that call on the name of the Lord are those who are elect, and the elect are predestined by God. How about we get in the book of Isaiah? Chapter but but I've got, I really have to, I'm okay, playing the opera. Okay, two more, two more, two more, two more, two more, real quick, two more, real quick. Isaiah, do you believe in Jesus? Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. That's and your the, answer to you, whoever call on the name of the Lord, go ahead. And it reads, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed. Nor confound it, world without end. So Israel is that world without end. Right? Give me the book of Acts 2.21. Come on, bring that out. Check it out. Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Oh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these, these words. words. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Read that again one more time. Now I'm confused. This is the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So, 
Not everybody oh. that call on the name of the Lord could be saved. Only the Israelites could that call on the no, name of the Lord. No, he's just talking saved. to the Israelites, telling the Israelites that whoever calls on the name of the Lord. It, he already talked in the Samaritan woman. He talks uh, that, that they will not have to come. The Samaritan woman was Israelite. I, oh. From Ephraim. From East, from East, from East. But that's a seven, and she's talking about well, you know, our father said that we had to worship in Jerusalem, right? And he says, oh, but there's coming a time when you won't have to worship at Jerusalem. That you'll that the the true worshippers of Christ will worship in spirit and truth, right. and that they don't have to go to Jerusalem anymore because right. Who they going to it's Jerusalem for? it's expand well for the whole sacrificial talk, system, oh, okay? So right, but that's fulfilled in Christ. Right, that's why he said that. Yes, that's why. absolutely. So, but it's not just for Israelite. Oh, well, I mean, I guess. I don't, I don't know. We might be arguing about something that's not an argument. I mean, I believe that I'm a completed Jew. Uh -huh. I believe that I'm. So you a, think you're a Jew? I mean, you believe you're a Jew? I believe that I am a well, not not ethnically, but I believe that I stand in the same line as Abraham. Oh, I believe wow. that there is one covenant. I believe that there's the covenant of works that God ordained and and talked about in the very beginning. And Adam fell. He was the first Adam. He fell into sin. And the whole, every, everything else is a, is a working out of that covenant of works that we have all fallen short of, except uh -huh. that it is fulfilled in the second Adam, which is Christ. And Christ fulfilled that what Adam could not do. So the second Adam fulfilled what the first could not do. And because he was God, his gift was um, infinitely valuable. That doesn't mean that it is for everyone. It is only for those who God has chosen. That's where I read the new covenant in the New Testament. Where he said that the right. children of Israel, he would make a new covenant with the house of Israel right. and with the house of Judah. Right. That's still the children of Israel. There's no other nation included in that. But we are all children of Israel. But the children of Israel, I mean, the children of Israel always could include uh, proselytes. It could always include people other than those who were born Jewish. I mean, there were, there were people, there are evidence, uh, there are descriptions of people in the Old Testament who were not born into Israel, into Israel, but they were brought in, such as Ruth the Moabite, such as, um, uh, it's such it's as... like married a, a Moabite or a, a woman of another nation. That's right, but he got saying. Christ through that person. She became a member of the Israelites. Because it goes off of the house of your father. It don't go off of the house of the mother. So but, whatever... But Jesus didn't have a father. I mean, what? he didn't have a, a, a physical father. Hold up now. Now that's no, going down a whole nother road. Now hold on now. So... Give me the book of Ruth. Dang, I want to stay on this topic. I don't want to go off of this topic, oh, but that's sorry, a good man. one. Hold on, sorry. Hold on. Hey. All right, let me get this. All right, let me okay. get through this. <laughs> no, Romans, one, 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 I'm, I'm, Romans I'm one, late, verse man. three. Okay, all right, this is, all right, because you're taking me down a whole another branch. I know, you know? right? It's all a right, big real topic. Quick, real quick. Romans one and three. One verse three. Is it Romans? Because you said Christ wasn't born of. He was born by the uh, Holy Spirit, so he yes. wasn't born of a man, right? Correct. Okay, go ahead and read. Romans chapter one and verse three. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. No, oh, by angel. The seed of David. No, by angel. Seed of David according to the flesh. According to the what? According to the flesh. Christ came just like everybody else. And this is going to prove it. Uh, Hebrews, what I call Now check this. This is going to prove it. Now watch. Now did you hear that, brother? Christ came from this, through the seed of who? David. 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 Right. Christ was, was born from a man. It wasn't, an immaculate it wasn't no angel oh, Christ. Was, but go ahead. Hold on, hold on. It was the Holy listen, Spirit. Listen to this. This is about to, this is about to sum it right up. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. The who? The seed of Abraham. When the Lord came, he could have came as an angel, but he didn't. No. He came through the seed of Abraham like everybody he else. Angel. He was a human, fully human, fully God. Uh, God, he was the God, the God incarnate. He was uh, begotten, the only begotten of the Father is the language that's used historically. Um, and he was incarnate by the Holy Spirit. It is not an angel. The, the Holy Spirit is the third person. Yes, it does. You know, you say that it was an angel. He, it was an angel that birthed him. No. So he came by, through the man's seed then? He came, he, uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, there is a trinity. God is a trinity. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's, 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 no, let's get some understanding. I gotta stop. 
I gotta stop. Come on, man. What's your I name? I gotta stop. Jonathan. Come on, Jonathan. I gotta stop. I gotta play an opera, man. All right, Jonathan. <laughs> I'll see you. All right, Jonathan. <laughs> Go ahead and bring that out. First draw to the fat number seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So that's what they say, that God the Father and the Holy Spirit is one being. No. Yes. They're separate. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. John 5 and 1st John 5 and 7. John 5 and 7. John 5 and 7. Hey, First John. When we read the scriptures, we can't get it wrong. Go ahead. Five and verse seven. For there are three that, that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the, the Word. Word is Christ and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's where they get it from because Christ is the Word. Uh -huh. Do you believe that? Yeah. Do you know that? Or we got to get the proof. If no, you don't, I know I, that. Okay, because if not, I will just get the proof. That's all. It's just one scripture away. I know that because every time there's something with the devil, mm -hmm. the devil always knocks three times to disrespect the Holy Trinity. Okay, so that's why they say that. They, they say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one being. Did you believe that? Mm. In the book of John, they, it means they don't want to court. We're going to explain it to you. John chapter 7 and verse 16. In the book of Colossians 3, verse 1. Colossians 3, verse 1. Now, when I'm in, when in God's eyes, right, I got my wife. I got children. Do God look at me and my wife separated and my children, or do he look at us all one? All one family. No. He looks at you. Oh, you don't know about that. Okay. Oh, I got to get the marriage. Ah. Oh. All right. Uh, King, remind me to get the marriage of, of the, um, because I I lose my thought a lot. Because these scriptures, I'll be thinking of the scriptures. Right I, see, the reason why I said that is because, I mean, I'm not married, but at the same time. Eve started all of this, man. All this sin stuff, <laughs> you know. She started, so it's hard for me to be like, no, they all, she ain't one because she ain't, she wanted to eat the apple and then okay, just tempt him with the, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you got to try this apple out. Yeah, that's, that's, It'll open your ass. Yeah, that's that's a carnal way. Now we all pay for it. I didn't, yeah, didn't but that, the that's how the Lord scripted it. It was gonna go out, played out that way anyway. So it, it ain't like we could really, really blame her. No, if we won't blame anybody. We gotta blame God, and I don't think none of us wanna do that. But go ahead and read. John chapter seven and verse sixteen. Bring it out. Jesus, Yahweh Shai, answered them and said, "My doctrine is not mine." Christ, Christ Himself said, "My doctrine is not mine." But who? But His that sent me. Sent me. It, it, who sent Christ down here? God. God. So how can it be the same person? All right. Read that everybody again. else says it, that it is. Like no, that's, that's why God. we go to the scripts. That's why we go to the scripts because we can believe anything. We gotta believe on God rather than man. Really get from the top. John chapter seven to verse sixteen. Y'all shall answer them and say, "My doctrine is not mine, but His that sent me." If anything, in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 19, go ahead and read your God. Now, we're going to get some more to make sure that you got it clear that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one being in general. I mean, not. They're all separate. They're all separate beings. Water. Getting tired verses. out here. You got Colossians? He didn't, he didn't give me a word. Slow it oh, down. Oh, give me Colossians. Give me Colossians. 3 and 1. Uh. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Hold on now. That's heavy. That's plain too. But go to read it again. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. John 14, 6. How can Christ sit on the right hand of God if he is God? But wait, wait, we got to get some more. We got to clear it up with these precepts. We're going to different books. Different prophets saying the same thing. And that's why we get 100% proof of evidence. That's why we go with the scriptures. Precept must be upon precept. We can't take one script out of context. We can take that however we want to take it. No. All the prophets are going to say the same thing. And that's what we're doing. So that's go. what churches do. No, they don't. Churches don't read precept. Oh, yeah, you mean churches read one, one thing one and take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. And that's how we still confused to the day. 
But what we do, the Bible said to be read precept upon precept. Uh -huh. Meaning, I'm going to have to get that straight. I got it. Uh, uh, yeah, I it. But we got to go back there. I don't want to forget where I was at. But go ahead and read. This is book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said unto him, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Hold on now. Christ is the mediator between the children of Israel and the Father. See that? Give me the book of Acts 7, verse 55. Let's make it clear. In the book of Acts, chapter 7, and verse 55. But he, being fully, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. That's the same, the same thing Colossians said. It was in the book of Colossians. But Colossians said he was sitting on the right hand of God. But Acts 7, 50, uh, Colossians said he's standing on the right hand side of God. You see what I'm saying? He said, no man go to the Father except through me. Meaning he the mediator between the children of Israel and the Heavenly Father. That's why he said he's going to take our name to the Heavenly Father. You see what I'm saying? Be written in the book of life. Right? Isaiah 28, nine. Oh, yeah. And Ephesians uh, 5 and 26. Come on, go ahead and read that. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them thou are waiting from the milk and draw from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, hear a little and dare a little. Whoa. He said a whole chapter. He said there a little and hear a little. Right? That's why we keep going to different prophets saying the same thing to let the conclusion be solid. You see what I'm saying? They all saying the same thing. Let's get some more though. Go ahead and read that this, about these precepts. This is the book of Psalm, chapter 119 and verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. What did God say? Through thy precepts I get understanding. Uh -huh. Therefore I hate every false way. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. See that? Reading one scripture and then putting your own little thick twist on it, that's a false way. Reading the Bible straight through, that's a false way. You get a bare minimum understanding, but you must get the precepts what locks it in to give you the clear understanding. Because you can take a you can read one thing and think it's saying something. It could be a, it's two, it's a few Johns in the Bible, but you think that one first John is talking about that John, but meanwhile it's talking about the other John. So it could be confusing, but if you go precept upon precept, then you get the understanding. But how about we read that in the book of Psalms 119, verse 100, Hebrew? Bring it out. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 100. I understand more than the ancients. Why is that, Hebrew? <laughs> because I keep thy precepts. Read that one more time, Mark. This is the book of what Psalm 119 and verse 100. I understand more than the ancients. I understand more than the ancients. Who is the ancients? Our ancestors. I understand more than the ancients. Because I keep thy precepts. Because we keep thy precepts. <laughs> See that? Precept must be upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Now let's get back on Christ being a separation thing. You know what I'm saying? Being separated and proving that they know not all one. In the book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 13. All right. Uh, Talking about the marriage. Yeah, hold on. In the book. Go ahead and read that. In the book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 13. Bring it out. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. One like the Son of Man. Came with the clouds of heaven. He came with the clouds of heaven. And came to the Ancient of Days. And came to the Ancient of Days. Who's the Ancient of Days? God Almighty. Why is he called the Ancient of Days? Huh. Oh, he said, who's the Ancient of Days? The Ancient of Days. Man, I never heard that one. He's the ancient of days because he created days, he created brother. Right. right. He was here before days. So, read that again for me, y'all. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds. The clouds is the chariots, the UFOs. Oh, so this is what, you're, what he just read. That's uh, He's speaking a um, parable. A prophet of... Uh, 
think of like the end of times. Right, Con. right, right. He's, a he's talking about a vision that he's seen. That, there you go. Con. That's right. Um, future prophecy. That's 100. Go ahead and read it again. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. In the book of Matthew 3, 16. Con. Go ahead and read. Second John chapter 1 and verse 3. Bring it out. Grace be with you. John 2 and verse 3. John 2 and 3. I mean, 1 John 2 and 3. Con. Go ahead and read that out. In the book of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. Con. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son. This is my who? This is my, my beloved son, son in whom I am well pleased. Did you hear that? So Christ was getting, John the Baptist baptized Christ. And the clouds came over him. And a voice came out and said, This is my beloved son. How's Christ down here and up there too? Read it again real quick for me, y'all. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it out. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in which I am well pleased. Now, how can they be the same one when he's down here getting baptized and then all of a sudden the clouds come to open up and say, This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased? Too. That's why I'm giving you precepts so it can be solid. So when you hear the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one being, you will already know that's that's not true. Go ahead and read this one. First John chapter two and verse three. Bring it out. And here back, we do Second know. Second John verse three. That's my fault. Second, Second John. Second John chapter one verse three. Nope. Second John verse three. Right. Hit it. Three. Three. There you go. Yeah, that's where I was at. Calm. Second John chapter one and verse three. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God, the Father, and from Yahweh Mashiach, the Son of the Father, the, who? the Son of the, the Father, Father, in truth and love. Read up how is it is written, one more time. Second John, chapter 1 and verse 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, and in truth and love. Did you get that? Is they one? Were they separate? They separate. Um, right. Read that one more time. I'm just breaking it down just because it's the last one on my call. Because I don't want to. I can keep going now. But you get it. Yeah. Go ahead. Second John to the one in verse three. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God, the Father. The Father. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. From the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The son of the father. The son of the father. That's why he tried to say that Macklin conception. You see, I went straight to the cut scripts. I went to Romans chapter 1 verse 3, saying he came through the seed of David. You see what I'm saying? And then he tried to say, because he tried to say that, I said, hold on, I got you. And let him know that he said, I come not as an angel, but through the seed of Abraham. You see what I'm saying? So let us know that he came through the seed. Like he was born like us, how we was born. You see what I'm saying? Because Mary had, was Christ the only son or the only child? No. You know what I'm saying? They say Mary was a virgin. You know what I'm saying? And the Holy Spirit impregnated her or, or the angel impregnated her. Come on, like, come on, man. Like, you know who got a similar tale like that? Who was that? Hercules. Mm. Yeah, may I please say something? What you got? Uh, okay, there's different forms of pro-life. Saving a child's life. Um, this is one form. My one uh, minister told me that when, when I got the water tested, okay, my my girl, my my lady friend, my girlfriend, I'd say one of them. She's she's a health professional. Uh, the city water um, had. Um, it was um, medically unfit at the time, and then I had to go to a township meeting and have that submitted so that could be taken care of. So somebody said to me in, at Mass, okay, that 
that was pro-life I that situation that that I rectified how rectified is pro-life or saving a, or saving the child from a dangerous situation right we got you, brother. All right, but we're going to get back Thank to the topic. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're right. He got it, E. You know what I'm saying? We call Esau E. That's their name. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, it's like, yeah. Esau, we just make it short for E. That's all. You know what I'm saying? 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 The twist on it. But the Caucasian is Esau. You know what I'm saying? That's why he could. Oh, there. We did read Obadiah for him, too, letting him know that he was trying to say that he could be in the covenant with the children of Israel, right? But then Obadiah said there would be no more. The Lord will wipe them all extinct. Cause you didn't know that either, right? Esau is the Lord number one enemy. That's why he's going to wipe them extinct, right? Is hate in the Bible? Romans 9, 13. Malachi 1, verse 2. I mean, is it? This is a scripture they won't read. From what I've been hearing since I've been standing here, it's, not, it's more than likely it is. Well, we're going to read it. sounds like he got some disdain for them. He did, did you go? He do. Go ahead and read. Romans chapter 9 and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. Jacob, the children of Israel, have he loved. But Esau have I hated. But who? But Esau Esau have I hated. Dang. The Lord said he hates him. That ain't my words, but that's in Romans. How about we go to another book and do precept upon precept like the scriptures I said? Listen what Malachi said. So go ahead and read. Uh, no. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse.